Welcome to another episode of the Limitless Life Podcast. I am your host, Kyle Smith. And if you not have not done so, hit the subscribe button so that you never miss another episode. And if you love this podcast and want some more tips and tricks on how to improve yourself, go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel. There are a ton of instructional videos there. You can find the links whenever you go to YouTube or in the comment section below. And today is going to be a pretty freaking cool episode. I'm very pumped. I'm very ecstatic. And the reason being is because I got Marty here and Marty is a very swell fellow. He is a, I, to my, to my, Dapper. from my experience, <laughs> Dapper, from my experience, a very kind hearted individual and works his ass off. And I, he first off he got unreal progress in the last three months he dropped down 30 pounds in three months and that in itself is awesome but the growth and the feedback and the input that i have been getting from you man has been unreal like your growth like how you've been shoot me messages and you're stressed about things that are the opposite of what most people are stressed about (laughs) <laughs> I know, man. The, the you know the big stressor. Well, I guess we'll probably talk about it more in a minute. Okay. I never thought that losing the weight would make me stress, and uh, and it has. And we'll talk about you know, that and the kind of a mental health issue. I guess here in a few. Absolutely. So, my man, uh, I guess uh, I guess more so. Let's let's dabble into that. Actually, let's talk about uh, the progress that you have gotten from your words and. Uh, Let's uh, enlighten the folks that are listening. All right. Well, I mean, man, I guess the journey, it, it's a short, it's been short. The start has been short, but it's been a long time coming. I think it's like that with a lot of people is, you know, life gets in the way somehow and, you know, it's different for everyone. And when it does, man, it just snowballs and, it, and, 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 we let ourselves go for different reasons. Um, you know, myself back in, you know, the end of 2017, um, I had gotten an on the job injury that uh, ultimately made me retire from, from a career in, uh, in law enforcement. Um, but prior to that, I, I sustained all kinds of injuries, I three shoulder surgeries, uh, completely torn hamstring and knee surgery. Um, you know, and those were from doing the job, you know, just getting hurt in your, you know, day to day, you know, chasing people and, and, you know, just different things. You know, when I hurt my back, I, I came down off of a retaining wall. It was after a call going back to my car and I kind of came down off a retaining wall it was just a little bit higher than I thought it was. And so, you know, when I landed it jammed, you know, my knee locked and it jammed everything up and, and it blew a disc, you know, in my lower back. And so I had a, you know, I was out of commission for a while. I had an initial surgery, came back for a year. It didn't really take, got worse. And, uh, you know, they said, hey, uh, you know, thanks for being around for 20 years, but, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna cut you loose. And so, I mean, I got lucky The you know, was, you know, the whole pension thing, um, got lucky with that. But then, you know, I got a job teaching high school and uh, it was great. And then the disc just completely blew out. So um, last April, so about 11 months ago, I went in and they did a, a fusion in my back. And so I got two rods and four screws in. And, uh, you know, I just, man, since that last injury back in 2017, I just put the weight on. Um, but I hit it well. I hit it really well. And I know a lot of guys out there go, oh, yeah, I, I remember I remember, you know, that, you know, I'm five, seven or five, nine. And, you know, I used to be 177 when I got into law enforcement and, you know, now I'm still five, nine, but I got up to 230 and I was wearing the two X shirt, you know, that looked a little big, but it held, you know, I could hide the gut and no one really realized that I was as big as I was. I just hit it that well. And in October, the surgeon, he says, Hey, you're good to start exercising again. And I was like, Oh yeah, we'll start running. And, and, uh, he's like, no, seriously run. And if it hurts, just stop. I'm like, it hurt before the back. I'm not, I, you know, I'm like, I'm not going to run, you know? And, uh, so I went out, started try to walk a little bit. I'm like, this, just, this not, you know, I just put it off the next day. 
And, uh, you know, finally, I've been thinking about it and thinking about it. And then this, this guy comes on Instagram and he's like, I'm giving away a free training session. And I'm like, okay, I've been, I've been, I've been wanting to do something and, you know, it's, have your bio in by, you know, by Black Friday or whatever. And it was you, I mean, it was Coach Kyle. And yeah. uh, so, you know, I wrote out this bio and I sent it off, you know, like on a Thursday, on Thanksgiving night. And uh, man, I just didn't hear anything. <laughs> and I didn't hear anything. And, you know, finally, you know, I'm watching all the Instagram, you know, uh, feed, you know, posts and stuff you got. And I'm like, I tell the wife, I'm like, I bet if I start replying on everything, at least, at least he'll know who I am, you know? And so I, well, I binge watched all your stuff and I'm liking everything, making some, you know, some, I mean, true meaningful comments, you know, um, but I don't hear anything. And so uh, gets close to Christmas. We're middle of December. I mean, it's, it's December 11th. I, I know the date because I started the next day. My wife and I are sitting there and she's like, quit talking about going to do something. We need it. And so I'm like, okay. And so, you know, we bought some you know, cheap hokey, you know, online, you know, workout thing online, you know, just some program. And we're like, okay, we'll do this. We started doing it and it sucked. Moving my body just sucked. Um, but what we noticed was the eating. We started eating right. Well, eating different. You know, we got a my fitness pal and we looked up a couple of different things. What should our calories be? And at that point, we just started changing the way we eat. And you know, my number, my number one goal was to feel better. Um, I mean, with all that weight in my stomach, I couldn't breathe when I bend over to tie my shoes. You know, I would lean against a wall and force my leg up to my, you know, my foot up my other leg to put a sock on and tie my shoes. And, and it was just, life was miserable. So I made the, I made the commitment that I'm not going to drink pop. I'm not going to eat candy and I'm going to try to eat a little more healthy. I said, we do that for three months. I'll do that for three months. And at least something will happen, you know? And I thought, you know, if I lose 10 pounds and I can keep 10 pounds off, I'll be happy, you know? Surely that'll make me feel better. 220 has got to be better than 230. And so that's how it started. And then the next thing I know, it's what, New Year's Day or maybe the day after or something like that. I mean, it was right after the new year. I, you reached out to me and said, Hey, I'm done reading through all these thousands of bios. And how would you like to work with me? And I was like, that's awesome. Because we had just stopped using the workout plan because I hurt my groin, you know, that's at, we were just doing at home calisthenics. I hurt my groin. So we went and we bought a membership at a gym and we were just going to the gym and just, you know, walking on treadmills, just kind of just doing something to keep us moving, you know, some Smith machine or some other kind of machine. And, uh, but we had no focus. We had no, we had nothing to direct us. So it was really, it was just, we were moving more. Um, by the time we made it official, I was down to, um, to 218. So I made it from 230 to 218 in about a month, month time. Um, but I had plateaued for about two weeks at 218. And I was just like, man, I, you know, I, I got down to 220 already, but now I'm stuck. And for two and a half weeks, it was depressing. I mean, it was like, what am I doing? Um, and then got in touch with you and you were like, don't change a thing. Just do what you're doing. I'm like, <laughs> on the inside, I'm like, but what I'm doing stopped working. Um, but you were like, I need the data. I need the data, the data, the data. And that's what really sparked my interest that it wasn't just some motivational kind of coach that will just give you a pep talk and encourage you. Um, because that doesn't really work for me. You know, just having someone say, you know, you can do it. It's not enough for me, but you know, we kind of went back to some of that at home exercising stuff, but going to the gym every day and 
man, when that week three was over and you're like, it's time to get serious. Cause you kind of monitored my, you know, my calories and my macros and gave me some direction, but on the workouts, you didn't give me a workout for what, two, three. It was week three, right? Was the first Something week. Like that, yeah. Yeah. Three, four. And I was like, I'm like, man, I'm, I'm ready to start. When am I going to start exercising? And now it just, yeah. Now I exercise, we, you know, we lift three days a week and we're in the gym total six days a week. Sunday, we just um, pretend it's like the old life and sit around and not do much, but we need it. Now we need it. You know, now I need the, the extra, you know, recoup time it was before just cause I was just lazy, you know? Um, but you know, that's kind of, that's kind of the journey. That's how we got introduced. Um, you know, I was the, the draw out of the hat, I guess. I don't, you know, I don't know what your criteria was. I tried to, you know, BS the best I could. Um, <laughs> but, uh, so that's where we're at, you know, and now I got this, at least I got a, a blueprint of, what I can do, what I should do. And that's really what, what we were looking for. Well, on the, on the way that I, on how I picked you, man, that one was uh, an absolutely easy one. I'm going to actually whip it up right now because I think it was super cool. So I'm glad you didn't say whip it out. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. So for those of you unfamiliar, I, for Black Friday, I did a uh, giveaway. It was a six month giveaway, and uh, all the all anyone needed to do to be a part of this giveaway was to tell me a really good story, and it was the reasoning as like why is it that you would be uh, a good fit for the program? So I'm basically just trying to get people to uh, really just tell me why right now is a good time to. Uh, to go for it. And I'm not going to read the the whole thing, but yeah, you, you just told me a really good story, man. You, I'll read most of it. It's like 48 years old, father of three, married your high school sweetheart at 17. You sweet, sweet person. (laughs) You, I know she's not watching this. So I can say she's cougar, right? Yeah. (laughs) You'd have been a senior when I was a freshman. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) That is awesome. But yeah, man, you, you were talking about one year post-op surgeon advised that you can get back to working out. Um, and there's so much stuff. So you said you felt like crap. Yeah. Your surgeon gave you the exercise to go ahead. And then you needed my help to learn to eat healthy for the first time in your life, help develop an exercise routine specific to your situation, help you so that you don't end up listening to this is my favorite part. <laughs> So you don't end up listening to that douche with the perfectly styled hair who who sounds like a used car salesman and wants me to download an app to find out my correct <laughs> body type. I can do this. I will do this. I will be your next success story. I will be an example <laughs> to my students and I look forward to working with you. And it was really the, there was a lot of parts in there that really stuck out to me, but I really admired the part where um you wanted to be the role model for your students and you actually just wanted to really live up to the person that I, that I imagine yeah. that you wanted to be. Yeah. And you know, and with the kids, the whole thing about, about my students. So, you know, I, I don't have a teaching degree and the, what I, I teach at a career technical education high school. So, you know, skilled trades kind of thing. And in that, that school, that program, they have a criminal justice, a law enforcement program. And so I just, I mean, I got lucky at the time that I was, that I was leaving the police department within a couple months, this job came open and someone pointed me towards it. And, you know, and I interviewed well and I got the job and these kids, you know, I looked at it as it's going to be a job. You know, I was an instructor as a, as a law enforcement officer and I could teach adults. If I could teach a bunch of cops, then I can definitely teach high school kids. I thought, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but you get in there and these kids, they actually make an impact on you. You know, I've got kids from my first year, you know, this, I, you know, I left the force in 2019. So, I mean, it's been that long. I've been dealing with this problem. Um, and so, you know, I go in and, and from 2019, I've got students who, you know, joined the military. Air Force, Marine Corps, went off to college, um, 
those who are now starting, you know, a career in law enforcement and they're still calling me. They're still, you know, sh- you know, I had one guy, he, he was in Afghanistan and he shoots me a message on Instagram, just, to, you know, just to, Hey, how's it going? What's up? You know, Mr. Mullins and, and man, they make an impression on you. And one of the things we do every Monday is they have workouts. So for an hour, they work out and we have some national guard, uh, soldiers they come in and they work out with them and stuff and it gives us time to prep for the week and stuff the teachers um but every year every every year the students have mr mullins work out with us mr mullins work out with us my guys you know i can't you know my back just hit my back's too bad my back's too bad and you know and sometimes yeah the back was bad but other times it wasn't it's i'm just too fat you know, they can't tell how heavy I am um, wearing a baggy shirt, you know, baggy pullover and st- uh, pull- polo and stuff like that. And and they just don't know. And, you know, so I just played the, oh, I'm always injured. And, you know, the last few months uh, in my class, they can't swear. You know, they can't say cuss words. And uh, when they slip up, they have to do 10 push-ups. And, uh, and now, every now and then, when one of them's doing push-ups, I'll get down and do push-ups with them, you know? And they're they're like, you could do push-ups? I'm like, yeah, I can do push-ups. What do you think? I, you think I'm weak, you know? Um, but, you know, before I was weak, and if I would have got down and did 10 push-ups with them, I would be, you know, sweating and winded, and it's just 10 push-ups, but it's 10 push-ups, you know? And so it was, you know, it was hard, but now, you know, it's, these kids really look up to you. I never, I would have never thought that they make the kind of impression on me that it seems I'm making on them. And so, you know, that really was a big thing that I, you know, that I, you know, wanted some direction so that I can, you know, so that I could be a more of a motivation uh, for them. And the kids now, I mean, they noticed I've lost weight. I mean, I, I, you know, the first Monday that I came in that, you know, I was like, man, I've lost, you know, I've lost so many pounds and stuff. And I come in and the students like Mr. Mullins, one went, you're tan. <laughs> Cause the wife and I hit a, you know, hit a tanning bed for a couple of weeks. And then the other one goes, Andy's lost weight. And I was like, <laughs> on the inside, I'm like, yeah, you know, um, <laughs> people, people start to notice and, you know, some people are afraid to tell you. And I don't know if it's because they think that you're going to go, oh, so you noticed I was fat, you know, I, I, but that's okay. It's okay to notice that I used to be fat when you notice now that I'm losing weight. And that's, you know, it's a good feeling. I mean, it, it really, I mean, it really, it really helps. I completely agree. It's it. Yeah. It's, it's really cool. Cause I always, I tell people too, is we're the last person that's ever going to really recognize the big changes there's going to be more people like your wife probably noticed a little bit quicker than you or the, the kids that you were teaching, they probably noticed well too, but when, and just so we have a complete where, so from what was the date again, December 23rd, you said December 12th was the day that I started. Okay. So December 11th, it, it, you know, it was, a, it was, you know, it was okay. This is my, this is my last, my last Dr. Pepper. Yeah. No, this one's my last Dr. Perry. I mean, I, and that's how it was. It's like, how many do I have in the fridge? Because I'm not throwing any away, you know? Yeah. Um, so, you know, it, it was just, you know, December 12th, this was it. And, and I mean, you know, my birthday was just last Saturday, not yesterday, but the Saturday before. That was, you know, that was 90 days. And the so, things that I said I was going to do for yeah. 90 days, I did no soda for 90 days, no candy. And th- that's, that's it for me. You know, I don't, I don't use tobacco. I, you know, I haven't drank since, you know, since high school and, you know, that was, that was going to be tough for me. And I, and I did it. And then we went out for my birthday and the whole idea was we were going to go to this one restaurant and I knew they had a certain brand of root beer. Cause that's my, you know, that was my thing. Um, I just, you know, I'm like, okay, we're going no fountain pop because I'll just suck down mm. refills. So I, I'll go there. We'll get the root beer with dinner and, and I'll be good. And I'll have one. 
and they they stopped serving that brand of root beer. So I thought, no, nope, I don't want the other kind. I'm not wasting my one root beer on yeah. the other kind. So then I I waited until waited a whole week, and then I went and got a root beer last night, and there was an extra root beer. Nice. I bought some for you know we had we went out you know had a go out for you know to socialize with some friends and and there was there was one left i bought you know a, a six pack and you know that was hard not to drink that last one that no one wanted and it really surprised me because i kept thinking the whole time that it's in the buddy's refrigerator by itself it's lonely i i shouldn't let it be lonely you know it's like <laughs> let me go drink it um, mm. but I didn't. And, you know, when I got home that night, I was like, that was like this big accomplishment for me. And it, I know it sounds weird, but for me, it was like, Hey, it's not hard to say no. Well, it might be kind of hard, but I could say no now before I couldn't say no. Very addictive personality that I have. Um, I was very, uh, I was a, a heavy binge drinker through middle school and high school. Um, and alcohol as a middle school kid. I mean, it's just insane when I look back at it now. But I have that addictive personality, and it's and it's always been that way with you know pop or food, you know chips. I can't just eat a handful. That bag's still in there by itself. I better go eat that whole bag, and that's how I've been. And now I can, I cannot do that. You know now. We were on the road. We went to uh, we went two hours away to uh, to a larger city this yesterday, and we stopped and got a sandwich and a bag of chips on the way home. You know, I ate like three chips. I went, you know what? I'm good. I, I don't. I didn't eat any more. We came home and we threw them away. And it was okay. Yeah, I used to eat a lot of those things, and now I can do without. Uh, That's pretty cool. I, I don't know. What, what have you found? Or actually, I guess we could talk about the stats. So from the 11th and 12th, more so. Than yeah, I'm well, sorry. Yes. I, I got us <laughs> no, derailed. No, no. Did I? <laughs> no, no, it's all good. It's all good. I don't mind. I don't mind sign tangents, brother. You're, you're bringing a lot of like good perspective to the convo. So I don't want to make sure I don't interrupt for it. But for from when you were starting there to when you're at now, what have you accomplished? So, I mean, other than, you know, those were those initials goals pop candy, just feel better. Um, I thought that if I could lose 30 pounds in say eight months, seven to eight months, I thought, man, that would be a great accomplishment if I could do that. And because I just, I mean, I started out just focusing on the number of calories and just moving just break a sweat. That's, that was my whole goal. If I could, I mean, other than the normal sweating when I tied my shoes, I mean, cause it, uh, man, I did, I, my, you know, top of my Irish head would just start sweating, you know, and, uh, and I would, I lose breath and I'd sweat and I would tie my shoes and be like, Oh my goodness. But you know, that's what I wanted to do 30 pounds in eight months. And Each month I started losing more weight and I was like, this isn't that hard. It's the mental aspect. If you can get your mind right, it's not hard. And people, you know, my, my students, my coworkers, oh, what kind of diet are you on? Like, I'm not dieting. Well, well, you're doing, what are you, you're dieting? What, how you change your diet? I go, oh, well, I just stopped eating crap. You know, um, now a couple times the wife and I, we shared like we went to a Christmas party. I mean, a sliver. And when I'm talking a sliver, I mean a piece of cake that was about that thin, you know, that we cut down and we shared it together. It was enough to wet our palate. And, um, and we're finding out that that's satisfying now. Well, before it was, oh, well, they cut me a slice that thick, so I'll go ahead and eat it. So, you know, 1,500, 2,000 calories on a slice of cake was no big deal. And I didn't know how that was really affecting my body. So, you know, as we, you know, by the time we hit 
the, we connected. Um, I was at that plateau 218 for about two and a half weeks. And, but I was still feeling good physically. Emotionally, I was taking a hit. And so we just kept at it. You came in and, you know, pretty soon you're like, okay, change your calories to this. I'm like, oh, okay, that's kind of a big drop. You know, it was like 300 calorie drop. Um, so I did that. And in the next week you were like, okay, keep your calorie count, but get this much protein, grams of protein. I'm like, how do I do grams of protein? Yeah, I didn't say it to you, but I'm talking to the wife and she's like, well, I've been watching my carbs and my fat. And I'm like, oh, this is the macro stuff, right? And she's like, yeah. I'm like, I'm only doing calories. Why is he giving me macro protein counts? So, you know, of course I'm having to look stuff up, whatever. So, you know, that's been difficult trying to get those numbers with the stuff you're already eating, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, starting to that and man, as soon as, as soon as we added that into the, to the system, the calorie change. And uh, I mean, it, it just started coming down again. And uh, we've, we've, We've played with that a little bit now for three weeks. So, you know, the calories are up and you know, the first time you, you change the calories and the protein grams at the same time, I bout through my phone. I'm like, I can't barely get these, the, the grams down now and you're adding more and changing the calories. And I, you know, I know my wife's just, she's just shaking her head, you know, she's <laughs> because bless her heart. She's the one that's doing the majority of the meal prep, you know? And, uh, and really, I mean, she's, she's probably been the, I'm sorry, sorry for you, but she's probably no, been a bigger good. help when it comes to the diet than you. I mean, you just throw random numbers at me. You know? <laughs> yeah. Right. Where did you get this number from? <laughs> What's the difference in eight grams this week? You know? Yeah. So, um, but, uh, so, you know, we've done that. And like, like you said, on the 90 day mark, that was my birthday. I was down 33 pounds. And so I was at, you know, I was at 197. I didn't think, man, I really didn't think I would break 200. I honestly, in eight months, my 30 pound goal, I really didn't think I was going to make it. Uh, I just didn't. Mentally, I checked out. I mean, I was just hoping that I could, you know, purge my system of all the, you know, all the, sugar refined stuff you know the candy and stuff like that um and then this morning i mean 194 you know i mean i was like man i i'm gonna i'm gonna break 190 next week you know and uh it's 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 unreal i mean my goals have changed you know before it was when we spoke you're like well what's your What's your, what's your physical fitness goal? What do you want to be able to do? I'm like one pull up and you just laughed. I don't know if you remember, but you just kind of chuckled about one push up. I mean, one, one pull up. Yeah. Um, and you know, there's more to that than the, the strength factor for me because I've had three shoulder surgeries mm -hmm. and, um, you know, one, you know, I had a torn rotator cuff and I broke the labrum in both sides. Um, and man, what we're doing we're doing bench press and my wife's going, is that your shoulder? Cause it just pops, yeah. you know, it's just, it's not stable. You know, the, uh, the muscles aren't built up and stable yet. And, you know, and it's just years of gunk build up, you know, that are finally starting to loosen up. And because I've, I didn't use those muscles enough to, you know, do much. So it's just, you know, the pull up will get there but I'm bench pressing again, you know, it's not much, but I mean, you know, I did, you know, where we work out, the only thing you can bench is on a Smith machine, uh, which I didn't know that that's what it was called until you're like, is it a Smith machine? I'm like, uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> then I had to Google what Smith machine. I'm like, yeah, it is a Smith machine. <laughs> um, but, you know, so, you know, I, you know, a hundred pounds, you know, plus the bar, I, you know, I'm, I'm benching, you know, 125 and I'm getting eight reps, you know, six to eight reps. And I'm going, 
I wonder what my one rep max is. And but I'm going, Teresa's spotting. I'm not trying, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but we get on the we get on the leg press and we walk over and whoever's on there last left all their weights on it, right? Mm. I mean, every single weight that was on there was on there. And, you know, the first day we did them, we took them off and just put a little bit on. And if I can pull this up real quick, because I'm going to, I mean, I'm going to brag. I probably shouldn't, but I'm going to anyway. No, you can brag. <laughs> There's nothing wrong. With, it's, a, it's, it's not, it's a acknowledging progress. There we go. <laughs> uh let's see where's the workout so i stopped yesterday because there was there were no more weights on the rack at 250 plus if the sled weighs anything so i had 250 on there and i did them 12 times so i'm like i can do what the guy before me did you know and and teresa's like don't hurt yourself don't hurt yourself and then i knocked him out she's like you need to do more weight. <laughs> That's <laughs> I'm awesome. Like, yeah. Okay. You know, cause I go back to the doctor next week and hopefully he's going to, you know, because my, my squats and stuff, my deadlifts, I, I, I'm limited. He's like, yes, don't go over this amount. So I haven't, um, on, you know, on those things, but there's not like curls and bench presses, leg stuff. He gave me nothing. It's the picking straight up stuff. He's like, you got to have a limit on. So I'm, I'm excited. I mean, I'm hoping that he either lifts that or really increases the amount. Cause I want to find out, you know, yeah, buddy. I mean, that's, that is a, that's a, uh, you know, that's a side factor. A byproduct is now I like lifting. I didn't like lifting in high school. I didn't like it in college, the police Academy after the fact, I've never liked lifting weights. And um, now I look forward to Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Um, and the wife, she, you know, we have to go early in the morning anyway. But if we go the time we used to go before we started lifting, all the guys that want the Smith machines are in there. And they're take, I mean, they take up the whole freaking hour. And now the wife's like, hey, we got to go before the meatheads get there. I'm like, we're those people now sweetheart you know we're the ones trying to get there to get the machines so i mean she goes i know but they're the meatheads i'm like then what are we she's like D get to the truck and drive <laughs> but you know oh, i mean it's the perspective has changed um yeah so that's i mean that's where awesome. we're at 2 30 to 194 and it's been a month and a week and how are things feeling man I physically i feel good but man in the evenings i am tired we, we've had to change our routine um because i tried to do a workout after work i just can't do it now i can go in and just get on the treadmill mm -hmm. um when there's a bunch of people there but even if it was an empty gym I don't think I could lift after a day of, you know, dealing with coworkers and students and traffic or whatever. I mentally I'm drained. Um, so I don't run a lot. So when I do, when I get on the treadmill, I'm not doing it to lose weight. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, I'm doing it for heart health. If, if that, I mean, I don't want to be tired walking from one end of the school to the next. And I mean, like anything else, if I'm going to be walking and getting tired, well, I should be walking now to not get tired for when mm -hmm. I got to walk, you know? And so I walk for heart health. I walk just to get that general um, physical activity. Yeah. yeah, you know, and I mean, and you've seen the step, my step count. You were like, oh, yeah, if you guys, you know, get, you know shoot for six or 7,000 steps, you know, and I'm like, I'm blowing that out of water. I mean, I'm not, you know, I mean, if I look at, look at the app just for this past week on steps, um, can't count Sundays. I don't do nothing on Sunday. <laughs> yeah. So yesterday, 10,500 day before that 9,500 
the 16, 17,000, 10,000, 14,000, 9,000. So I'm getting my steps in, you know, I go, I'll walk for a little bit. I'll listen to, uh, you know, a YouTube channel or something, um, <clears throat> an audio book. I can do those when I'm walking. I can't wait if I try to run. If I run, I've got to have some pounding music, you know. Some um, beat. But, dum, dum. Yeah. 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 Got to have a cadence of some kind. Um, but I still hate running. So I don't, I rarely, if I run, it's because I just want to see if I can run. And I'll go, the first time I start running, I say, okay, I'm going to run to one song. I just, I'm going to get through one song. And I did. And the next one was two. And then last week, I'm like, you know, what? I'm going to run for three songs. I ran for three songs. I got done. I'm like, yeah, you know what? I'm just going to walk and listen to somebody podcast. That's sweet. <laughs> because it just doesn't, it's not for me, I guess, running. Um, I had to do that after people for 20 years. I don't feel like. <laughs> yeah. At least then you had like a real purpose in that moment to go yeah. running. It's like, I oh, yeah. go chase this and guy. I, <laughs> and I was still kind of fat then too, you know? And I mean, it's like, as long as it didn't go more than like a block and a half, you know, I can catch some. I got some, my little legs can pick them up and put them down. You know, fat guys can run short distance. You get to two blocks and that rookie's going to catch him by the time I can catch my breath, you know? Yeah. <laughs> That's so funny. So yeah, on the, on the note of mental health, cause I think, or not even mental health, but uh, on a, on an interesting little contrast of experiences. Cause I love that you share with me, like uh, the wins that are happening the day of, or whatever's happening and you've been crushing it, my man. Like uh, there's the one where you were talking about, you went in for uh, you went in for your checkup and oh, yeah. your doctor said that there were, there was like improvements in you'll have to like mention it, but there was a, a clear improvements in a lot of variables. And your doctor was like, holy shit. When they yeah, said all, like how long all my blood work um, came back uh, and I improved everything, it, you know, the cholesterol, the good, the bad, you know, you know, no, you know, everything that, you know, I have no sign, you know, no uh, indicators of heart disease or any of that. And the last two years I went in, they're always like, you, you need to lose weight, you know, you've got, you know, severe sleep apnea, and you need, you know, you got to eat better, you know, I'm like, okay, I'll eat, you know, I'll eat better, doc, what do I got to do to eat better, and they're like, well, less red meat, I'm like, okay, we'll only have it six days a week, you know, and she'd look at me and roll her eyes, I'm like, well, what do you expect, you know, she's like, well, what I expect is this, and I'm like, okay, check me off that I've been here this year, you know, yeah. And so I came in this year and she's like, COVID usually hurts people. And I'm like, well, this is COVID, you know, this was, you know, this was, a. I go, I did this in, in, since December, you know, and this was, this was just February that I went to the doc, you know, and she's like, you did this in like two months. I'm like, yeah. She's like, I can't, you're coming back in six months. I'm like, why? She was, I want to see, I'm like, okay, I'll sign me up you know so uh mm. and so you know she just couldn't believe that I've lost you know I was losing that much weight and you know my blood work was so clean and good um so I you know she you know she and that makes you feel good when your doctor finally says something good about your health you know because usually it's like well at least you're not dead you know I'm like I'm cooking brisket this weekend doc you want to stop by love brisket man. i know right so oh, and here again now that was a big thing am i gonna be because i'm a big smoker you know i we that's something i do and uh i stopped in the winter last winter i was doing it it's snowing outside i have a smoker going this year we've only smoked once in the winter and it was kind of because of this you know um but now i can ration myself you know i can portion properly i i know what it takes now before it was like ooh, there's some more in there can't let it be lonely you know mm. <laughs> gotta go get it but we can we can now and now i it's not leftovers anymore now it's prep so that's that's how we look at it it's, nice. it's we just we just prepped you know all this chicken's not leftover it's prepped now for the next you know two three days so uh it's it's meant you know it's how what's your perspective in things but uh that's a fantastic reframe. I'm actually going to steal. I'm going to use it for future clients for sure. It's there not, you go. yeah, it's not leftovers. It's prep. Totally. It's prep. 
Yeah. So there's a, there's another one. That, I like this one because it's a fun dichotomy one. And we were chatting uh, about it before. It's so I know, I think funny. I'm going. All right, go. go ahead. So, so first one, because it's a contrast. So it got one of the photos. You're looking spiffy in a suit. Uh, you're like 17 and a half years. You haven't been able to wear that suit, right? And then you're like, oh, yeah, I threw out all of my old clothes except for these two suits. Apparently, you should have kept all your clothes. <laughs> So, so just, just to, just to make sure that we're all this all going one at a time. So Man. how did you feel in that moment? Like where uh, you okay, so, fit that suit and yeah, go for it. So, okay. The, the, so there's two posts about the same suit. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. So the first one is, um, okay. I've got this suit that when I left my first police department, I came, you know, and then I came up to the bigger city and became a cop in 2005, I got swore in and I, I kept that suit because I could kind of there for a while, you know, I could still squeeze into it and, you know, just don't button the button. You look okay. And, uh, uh, then it got to the point where I couldn't wear it, but I really like the suit. And it's one of those, you know, one of these day suits, you know? And so all my other suits I got rid of and I kept those two, um, and they just hung in the closet and I bought another one, you know, but for the most part, I was just kind of a slack guy, you know, slack sweater, whatever. Um, and then one day I was like, I'm going to try that suit on and it fit and it was perfect fit. And, uh, and I ended up wearing that day and I took a photo, you know, like this and sent it to my wife. Cause I, I had to, uh, go to a neighboring city for something and, you know, I took a picture, I sent it to, to the wife outside, you know, a little selfie up like this. And I could wear this suit for the first time. Now, I, and how when, I, when I wore it then, I was about 195, 190-ish. I thought that's what I weighed back then. Um, and so I felt real good, you know. I hadn't broken that, you know, I hadn't broken 30 pounds yet, but I was in the suit. And, uh, man, it wasn't two weeks later. Uh, the other suit that hung right next to it, it was, it was a Sunday. We were getting ready to go to church and I get this, I get the suit out and it fits. It was tighter than the other suit and it fit. And I'm like, you know, it's hundred percent wool pinstripe. It's gray with pinstripe and, you know, double breasted. And it, I mean, it cost me a, it cost a penny when I bought it, you know, and I'm like, yeah, I can wear it. I got the tie on and the shirt and I go downstairs and I go, Hey, sweetheart, look. And she's like, you look like you're wearing your dad's suit. I'm like my dad's suit. She goes, no, your dad's suit. Like I'm a little kid wearing his daddy's suit and I yeah. look at it and I really take a moment to look at it. And it's so baggy on me. I mean, you know, because the gut, you know, the gut makes you wear a larger jacket. And now when your gut's gone, it hangs on you. And I get to looking at the shirt. And before you button that top shirt, it's tight. You know, I was wearing like an 18 neck and it's tight. And to the point where I'd usually just put the tie up and not button the top button. Mm -hmm. Now I got the top button and it's hanging down. I got so depressed because I went upstairs and none of my dress clothes fit. I mean, I literally laid it all at all of my jeans, all my slacks, uh, you know, three suits and none of them fit. And my wife comes up and she's happy. She's like, this is awesome. Think of the shopping spree we get. And that's, it hit. I mean, it just, it fried me so bad that all I could see was money, dollar signs, just out the window. Yeah. And it really, I mean, it really upset. I, I sent you a message that you I was, I mean, I was like, man, I know there, there's nothing that you could do for me. Um. But my I appreciate, wife was... I appreciate that. Like when you sent me the message, I'm glad that you reached out with like how you're feeling. So that yeah. I understood it was good. I mean, the wife was, she, she was happy for me and, and I feel bad now that I couldn't be happy with her. Mm. And, 
you know, I even got upset because she went, we were talking to a friend and she brought it up to a friend and I was a little upset about it because I didn't want them to know. And he's like, hey, you look good. You're losing a lot of weight. I'm like, yeah. She's like, yeah, and he can't wear none of his clothes, you know? And I'm like, I, I, I don't know why. It just all overwhelmed me at once, you know? And if I could give any advice to anybody is, you're going to find lows when you should, when you think you should be at a high and it could be for anything. I mean, I should have been ecstatic, but for whatever reason, some other subconscious part of me who has issues with, you know, I can spend money on my family and not think about it. But the minute I buy something for myself, I get buyer's remorse and I feel guilty about buying myself something, probably a whole nother issue. I don't know, but that's all I can see was someday. Yeah. Right. Now, all I can see is this money flying out the window. And, you know, so I've got one pair of dress slacks that I can I can wear that don't look bad when I fold the side of the waist over and put a belt on that. I've had to carve two more notches in just to be able to use the same belt, because now all I think is if, OK, I don't want to stick at no 30 pounds. You know, I want to get I want to go down more. But I don't want to go buy $500 worth of clothes just to have to get rid of them in another two or three months. So, you know, so now I've just, okay, I'm, I, I can deal with, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to spend the money and buy the new clothes, but it's not all at once, you know, and that's here again, that's part of that addictive personality that I had with my food that I couldn't portion before. And now that I can portion with that food and I can recognize that now I can recognize, Hey, I can portion other things. I got to get new clothes at some point. Well, you know what? I can just buy one pair of pants this week and a shirt and see what kind of rate I'm losing, still losing weight. And then if I only got to throw out one pair of pants, then it's just one pair of pants. And if I two more weeks from now, I get another pants because I've dropped some more weight, then it's just one more pair. And eventually I'll get at that weight uh, because ultimately I think I want to go a little lower than what I feel is comfortable and just put a couple more pounds of muscle back on. I'm not looking to get jacked or anything, but I want to be healthy and I want to find that spot, you know, and then then we can go shopping, you know. Absolutely. But, you know, she's the same way. She doesn't see it. She's we're doing this together. And when when I work out, she works out when I eat, she eats and and vice versa. We're, you know, she has her different numbers, of course. um, But we're doing it together. So she's losing weight. And, uh, you know, she's not seeing. The same numbers, Mm -hmm. which she you know, she doesn't, she didn't weigh what I weighed, you know, but she still wants to see those same numbers. She's still down. She's lost 26 pounds. Awesome. In the same amount of time I've been doing this. And she's like, I, you know, you're at, you're at 36 pounds. You 10 more pounds than me. I'm like, sweetie, I'm nine inches taller than you, you know, and I'm a guy. I haven't had kids before, you know, so Totally. I actually got a question for you. Cause I think, cause it's, uh, the people that we're spending our time with, like the, our affiliations are super, super important for the success of whatever we go around. Like the teamwork makes the dream work. Right. Yeah. So you're right off the bat, your, your wife is absolutely a wonderful support system and is yeah. in the journey with you. Yeah. So for some guys that are out there that want to make similar changes, but they don't feel like they have as much of a support system, would what would you recommend? They ask their wives, say their wives, uh, what kind of what kind of in or uh, yeah, what kind of input do you have or insights do you have on that? Oh, uh, you know, I would say step back for just a second and see what your wife has done in the past. Has she tried to get on a journey by herself? Because that's one of the things that, you know, talking with with my wife about it is she's like, yeah, I failed because you wouldn't do it with me. And I never looked at it like that. You know, I looked at it as I don't want to do it. 
God, I got work till I work midnights. I always work when I was working the street, it was always midnights. And I was like, you know what? I just don't feel like working out. I get my workout at work when I chase people. But you, you don't chase people that much, you know? <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, I just, I was always tired, you know, and didn't feel like doing the stuff. So I would say first step back, look and see what your wife or your significant other tried without you. Mm-hmm. And then use that as your carrot. Hey, I, you know, I remember when you were doing this, can I, can I do that with you and make it like, oh, you want to do what they want to do. I've in 30 some years of marriage. I've realized if I want to do something, if it's something that she wants to do, then I'll be able to do it, you know? Um, but if, if you look and see where, she, what they've tried and maybe weren't successful, then start there and for, you know, and for her, it was, I, I just didn't work out with her. I just didn't go exercise with her. And so she didn't succeed because she didn't have that support. Uh, and, you know, I didn't discourage it, but I didn't really encourage it, you know? Mm. So I would start there. And then um, if maybe there's nothing in that that plays, or maybe you do have that, just say, hey, can you help me? And you know what? Most of the time, if we ask a significant other for help, they'll probably help. Maybe they can't do it the same way or something, but they'll support you for the most part if you ask. You know, at least in my case as a guy, if I, you know, you know, show some vulnerability, vulnerability, um, you know, my wife would jump on that and say, hey, yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll do that with you. And for us, I mean, we're doing stuff together and that's a big deal. I mean, you know, for years working midnights, we didn't get to do a lot together because I'd be asleep or at work, you know? Mm. Um, and the only time we did do stuff was to go do the kiddo stuff, you know, you know, choirs, football, whatever sports with the kids. Uh, so now this is an us thing, you know, and that probably really tightens it up and makes it, it, it does. I mean, it really does. And if, if I don't feel like going, she's like, let's go, you know? And if she doesn't feel like going, then I'm like, yeah, Hey, we said we were at least going to go walk. Right. Mm. Um, so, you know, if those were the two things I could recommend to try to get your, your partner to, to do it with you is see what they tried in the past that they had trouble doing. Think about if that's because you didn't help them and then just ask them to help you. Hey, can you help me? You know, maybe they don't maybe, I mean, if you're wanting help running a marathon, it's probably not the person to ask. But if you if you weigh 230 pounds and you want to lose 30 pounds and your goal is just to move around, you know, and eat right, I chances are they're going to want to do it with you or at least help you. I mean, maybe they're in good shape and you're not. And they'll go, oh, yeah, I could I could walk instead of run, you know, three times a week and walk with you and run later, you know. Um, so that's what I would do. That's pretty sweet. So what do you think? uh, Oh, go ahead. No, I said that's probably probably the easiest thing too. I would agree with that. It's actually so, so funny because we we all seem to have struggles with asking for help. Yeah. And something that I had to, uh, a reframe that I had to tell myself in order to basically give myself permission to ask for help. I had to, uh, I put it into like a humorous way just so I could like, break the, break the feels a little bit so I could think right. clearly. And I was saying, Kyle, man, absolutely ask for help. People want to procrastinate. They'll help you out. So they don't have to do their own thing. So they don't have to, <laughs> right. Unfortunately, I am a procrastinator. So oh man, yeah, we I feel like that talk is. today. <laughs> so good. <laughs> so since you've been in the program for at least two months now, just yep, over two ish months now, what do you think of the program as a whole? And then as a separate part, what do you think of working with me as a whole? So as two different. Well, parts. if I could take you out of the program, program be perfect. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, no, so the program as a whole, I'm still learning it. 
Um, but you know, when I think about it, the the three big things that, that I really like, um, I like the app. Um, now, I don't know if that's a specific to you app or if that's something you you take and tailor it for your for you and your clients. I don't know. Um, but the app's really good. There's a lot of really cool features in it. There's a lot of stuff that can be done in it to help track. Um, I'm sure if someone utilizes it to its full potential, they can find stuff to make better or change. It's an app, right? Um, but for me, starting out, it's good. It links with with my fitness pal. Um, it tracks, you know, I use an Apple, you know, Apple Watch. I can hit when I go running, I can hit, I'm going to do a run or a walk or whatever, and it uploads it in there. Um, so, the, you know, the app is really good. So I, I like the app. It's, it's for the most part, it's easy to work with. Um, I like the spreadsheet that you, that you send me that I enter the stuff in. Um, that's, that's very helpful. I, I know it's not part of the app. It's, you know, it's part of your system, but, uh, but I really like that. Um, if we can link that, link those two together. I'm that's, working on it, man. I'm working if, on it. I want if, to. If so I find bad. a way, if I find a way, do I get a cut? I mean, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. So the app, and then you. I mean, really, you you're making the program. Uh, just you, man. I mean, I th I honestly thought that because you know it's not like you're like, hey, here's my private number. You know, it was like, hey, here's the app, and I thought, oh great. So I'm gonna send him a message, and a day or two he'll get back to me. Or something like that. And I mean, for the most part, if I send it, I it's like being a couple minutes later, you know, I, during the work day, I don't get it right away. And I understand that because I'm at work too. Um, but if I just have a random thought or something, I just send it to you. And it's just like if we're texting on the phone, you know, I mean, you answer it really quick. And, um, you know, it, you know, I already told you before that the motivational part isn't what drives me. Um, but you do a lot of motivational stuff and you put out videos for us to see um, that is just for us, you know, and and that's really good. Um, and sometimes it sparks other conversations. Can you hear that? Yeah, just a little bit. It's not that. Hey, Kyle, I'm on a call. Oh, you got a, you've got yourself a Kyle too. I got a Kyle, <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, but uh, you know, you, you're there, you know, and the motivation stuff is great. And I don't know if you if you the the latest one you put out, well, you put out the other day, um, and you talked about some things, and one of them you mentioned delegation. And I was like, out of nowhere, I was watching that and it popped. Hey, you know what? I'm going to use, I'm going to delegate some stuff to my students to take off my plate, you know? And it's like, I can see, I can see now a majority of other teachers going, you let your students do that. <laughs> and then my co-teacher, the teacher that teaches in my same program, different topic in my program, she'd be like, I'm doing that because <laughs> we're lazy cops. I mean, you know. <laughs> oh my goodness. but you know it's just those things that you know that that you bring and not only do you bring that but you listen to the stuff we say and just like a minute ago you're like oh i'm going to use that for future clients mm -hmm. um you don't have this mentality of i know everything and you need to listen to what i say you're like hey this came from so-and-so or, you know, I read about this and this is what I think. And I look at it and I go, you know what? I do that with my students. Every day we have a quote of the day. And uh, every now and then it's, it hits me that, hey, you know what? Here's the quote of the day. Hey guys, let's talk about this quote. I didn't invent this quote. This isn't me, but this is how I think about it. And this is how it affected me as a cop, or this is how it affects me when I was in high school. How does it affect you? Um, so it's that kind of same stuff that you bring to it to us as adults that you can put it into, you know, our our mental and physical health perspective that that really helps. You know, you're not just, you know, I mean, yeah, you're 
way north of me, but in another country, <laughs> you know, um, which was kind of surprising. Like, Where are you from? You're like Canada. I'm like, oh, okay. Uh, but uh, it was, you know, it, it's that kind of stuff that, I mean, that makes you more human instead of just something's out there. And I told the wife, I'm like, look, his beard's almost as long as mine was, you know? And I'm like, is this like a thinness guy with a beard that doesn't have arms that are like this big, you know? Cause nowadays you, the guys that have a beard that are into health are usually some big jacked up guys that you're wondering, is that natural? I mean, I, you know, but I mean, you just, you came across in your Instagram stuff as a normal guy who is into helping people get healthy. So that's pretty much it, man. I mean, so, I mean, you're not the used car salesman with the, you know, the perfect jaw and the, the, the whoosh. The little swoosh, right yeah. The, the but, whoosh. yeah. Yeah, that's so good. <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong. I, you know, I know he's helping millions of people of or, or at least two who are good paid actors. I don't know. But, <laughs> yeah. But, oh, uh, man. but yeah, I mean, you, you checked off that mark man That's so sweet <laughs> not boy not you know yeah beard man yeah it's man yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's so because yeah, awesome. i i i i had mine down about here yeah so i had a pretty good one dude yeah then, like your your pictures look like you had a freaking it was majestic yeah. it was yeah, majestic well, well you know i i you know 20 years as law enforcement i couldn't we weren't allowed to have a beard and when I got out, I'm like, I'm growing a beard. And I grew it for about three months. And on the wife's birthday, she had made a comment the night before. She liked the beard because her rule was you got to groom it. Yep. It has to look nice. It's got to smell nice. I'm like, okay. So I did that. That's fair. And then for her birthday, I shaved it. And she was like, oh, you know. And then I go, you get two months. And she's like, why? Well, I go, January 1st, I'm growing a year. She's like, why? I go, a year long beard. I'm growing a year. And I did. I did not trim it. I didn't. I didn't trim it at all. No, no fuzzies off the side. I just grew it. Now I, I brushed it. I combed it. You know, I oiled the skin. I did. I did everything and had this lovely beard. And then I just shaved it shaved for her it again. Off. I said, yeah. she goes, you. So one year, I well, the problem, I went and got it cut. Yeah. You know, a year, a year and a week, something like that. I went and had it professionally cut. You know. And I hated it. And I was like, mm. you know what? I'm just shaving it off. That's fair. So I did. <laughs> One of these days, I'll, I'll grow back. So actually, a kind of cool question. So uh, so you're at this point, you're at this point in the process, right? Yeah. We're here today, presently, absolutely crushing it. Let's think of like the next six months to the next year. What are your what are your thoughts? What are you thinking? How do you feel about the future, the upcoming future? What are your thoughts on that? As far as far as my health, yeah, like my, my physical fitness. Um, man, so I I still want to lose weight. Um, you know, a lot of people they get into this this process. Um, in, of getting healthy and getting fit and in shape. And I, I see it in the infomercials and you see it in, you know, social media. It's all about the six packs. It's all about the six packs. You get that little V down there below the six packs, you know, and I don't care if I get that great. Um, Cause I'm almost afraid if I get it, I want to, the face isn't the only place that was bearded, right? You know, I, I got a little bit of a hairy chest, right? And I got some hair. And I don't know if I want to shave, you know? <laughs> oh, I might like, cut a nipple off or something. I don't yeah, know. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, you know, it will, it'll, it'll, it'll be there if it's there. But I'm not focused on it. Um, I was it that you're... With I'd be happy with a, just a flat stomach, you know, Fair enough. Um, the abs will come when the abs come. Um, so for me, I want to lose weight. Uh, I, I want to continue down that weight loss to somewhere in that. What the government says is not obese. According to them, I'm still obese. 
Mm -hmm. I'm five nine and 194 pounds and I'm still overweight. I get it. I am overweight, but man, I, I, you know, 35 pounds ago was overweight, you know, Mm -hmm. now I'm, I'm feeling, I feel good. If I, if, if someone says you can stop now, you'll never gain another pound, right? Even if you work out, you'll be the same weight that you are right now forever. And you will just get, you know, muscular, but you'll be the same way. I would say no. I, you know, I want to lose more weight. Now I want to be cut. I want to be toned, you know, I want to have that muscle definition. Um, but I don't, you know, getting jacks, not the, not the issue for me. I'm, I'm 49, you know, I'm going to be 50 next year. I don't, you know, there's guys out there that are, and that's great for them. I just want to be healthy. Um, and to be honest, that one pull up that I told you, I want, that's really not a goal anymore for me because, you know, my shoulders work different over my head. I get that. I could go have surgeries and get it completely fixed. Don't know that I want to, I'm going to work on the muscles around the joints and Mm -hmm. get strong and stable. If a doctor says, Hey, you know what? You need this. We'll consider it. But if I can do everything else and not be doing pull-ups, it'll come. It just will, you know, but I'm not focused on that anymore. So six, six months from now, man, if I could, if I could, you know, if I could break 180 Mm -hmm. in three more months, I would be happy. I mean, I'd be ecstatic. Um, And when I say that at first, I'm like, you know, it's not real, very realistic. But then when I compare that with where I was three months ago, 180 in four months, if I don't make it, I have broken something and just can't go do Mm. because one, 180, that's nothing, right? That's 14 pounds. I never would have thought, (laughs) I can't believe I just said that. 14 pounds is nothing. 35 pounds ago, that was forever, you know? And I, you know, I haven't starved myself. I haven't done extreme workouts. I started out 20 minutes a day, four days a week of doing some at-home exercises, crunches, lunges, you know, some push-ups, just simple calisthenic stuff for, for 18, 20 minutes and built myself up to the point where I don't even, I don't, I don't know this built up, but I don't do that anymore. I lift three days a week. It's never taken me more than an hour. And usually what makes it go longer is because I don't know what I'm doing. So I have to look at your video, you know, three or four times and make sure I'm doing it right. Um, You know, what the heck is a Ukrainian deadlift you know i'm like what i don't what you know so uh you know just it takes longer to get there uh you know and the wife and i now are doing the first two weeks the first week she didn't do any of the, the weight lifting with me uh then the second day of the second week she started and we've been doing the same exact weight mm-hmm. uh routine every day um and then when i'm done she goes does some extra abs and makes me feel guilty but i'm like i'm not doing it i'm not doing it i got i got i gotta go walk i gotta get my steps in <laughs> yeah um but it's just simple stuff i get in and i just i you know i put the stepper i put the treadmill on on you know speed three three miles an hour and i just walk and i watch something i'm not i'm not killing myself at the gym i see some of these other people and they're on that elliptical. I mean, they're like sprinting on it and they get off and they pass out. You know, I mean, like it doesn't look fun. And if it's not enjoyable, I won't do it. Now I'm finding enjoyment in lifting because mm. I'm not rushing to do it. I'm not, you know, I'm not, you know, taking all day, but I'm not rushing through it. Mm. So my long term goal is just keep doing what I'm doing and. You know, I don't play the stock market because I don't like that up and down. I don't like weighing myself every day because it's an up and down, but it's going down, you know, more than it's going up. So, you know, so I I actually, I, that's a love hate. 
you know, weighing yourself every morning is a love hate. It but, is. But I I like looking back on the daily. Yeah. Um, like I look at last week's and I see the up and down and then I see, oh, but today, Sunday, I'm at 194. Mm -hmm. Then you like seeing it. In the in the app, you when you put your date or uh, your weight in, you can go in. You can go yeah. like the last like three yeah. six and months it, as like yeah, yeah, that's cool, so, man. I guess you know six months to a year. I'm still on a lifting three days a week, walking and doing some abs the other days of the week, taking Sunday completely off just to be with the family and and relax and. And, uh, you know, talk to the families who, you know, I got two, two other kids that live in different directions across the country. And, and, uh, that's just a day for us to sit back and go, well, you know, I'm not that hungry today. Coach Kyle might get mad. I didn't meet, I didn't meet my macros and my calories, but I'm not doing anything. So I'm not burning as much. Right. <laughs> I know that's not how it works, but <laughs> Um, no, that's good. You know, the rest so, is important too. The rest is very yeah, important. I mean, but yeah. at this point, it is just a lifestyle change. I mean, we get up at 4 a.m. now so that we can get the, to the gym when there's not a lot of people there. Um, it's mainly when we get there, it's other, it's people our age or out of shape to the point that we kind of are, you know, and, and older people. A um, couple of really old guys that are in there that are probably in better shape than I am, but they, you could tell they get up early every morning and go and we get that done. And by eight 30 at night, man, I am spent. I, before I started, you know, with you, before I started with you, there was no going to bed at eight 30, nine o'clock. I mean, 11 30, 12 o'clock, knowing I got to get up in the morning, you know, and, you know, by 6 a.m., you know, and so I'd be in bed at 1230 at night trying to get tired to go to bed. And now I get up at four and we work out and we go to work. And in the evening, we sometimes will go walk, you know, at the gym or, you know, go just maybe go get a tanning booth or some wrinkle hygiene head generating booth thing that my wife does or me. I just like going and getting on the, the hydro bed. So I tell myself, you know, it's a massage bed, water massage bed thing. And I tell myself, you know what, I'll go walk for 15, 20 minutes. Then I'll go lay on that. And we'll leave. Mm -hmm. And that just helps me wind down. And we go home, we eat dinner and we, we <coughs> sit around a little bit and then we go to bed. We're in usually in bed by 830. How cold. That's, that's fantastic. So it's just, just changed. You know, we've just changed. I think that's awesome, man. So who would you, so with your experience and uh, working with me and all that good stuff, who would you, uh, would you recommend this program to anyone? And uh, if so, yes. why would you do that? I mean, I would, I would recommend it to, you know, anybody, but specifically anybody that's in, you know, the middle aged, you know, person like myself, um, even younger, really. I mean, anyone that's, you know, hitting their forties, that's, that has just, let themselves go and does not know how to get back on track because that's that's what we were looking for and i mean at one point i was like you know what i need more i just need someone to to spoon feed me everything now and you didn't quite do that and i'm glad you didn't but you gave me the resources and that's what i do with my students i give them the resources and if they can't find it then they can come to me um, and then I just open the book. I would say it's right there, right, right. Did you open it, right? You know, um, but I was looking for, hey, just spoon feed me. Just eat this today, eat that tomorrow. Um, and I really didn't need that, but I was lazy. And um, with you, you give us a sample menu book, you know, hey, here's a bunch of menus, pick. You know, you got to commit somehow here, commit by picking your own food and making it. It's not Weight Watchers. We're not going to send you your everyday meal. You've got to invest in it. Um, and so if you but if you. If you can use the resources. You need someone to point you in that direction. Use the program. 
Um, I mean, even the workouts, you say do these workouts, but you also say, hey, if there's something going on there, um, here's a resource, click on where it says all, alternate, you know, alternate method for, you know, for the deadlift. Mm -hmm. And there's alternate, you know, alternative ways that you can work those same muscle groups. And it's a resource that you give us, but we have to take some initiative. But you can, if you need someone to point you in a direction like I did, use the program. It's not it's not hard. And, you know, people, you know, I've got friends that, man, what you, you, you're doing such a great transformation, you know, and I really don't like that, you know, the trans, I, I'm not transforming anything. I just stop eating crap all the time. You know, I still eat red meat. I eat a lot more chicken, but I always like chicken. So I just don't deep fry it, <laughs> you know, uh, um, no, I don't mean I'm not going to have some deep fried chicken one day, you know? Oh, hell yeah. If I but, ever come down to visit, I'm going to have some freaking deep fried chicken for sure. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it's just, it's just, I just change some things. I didn't change a lot, but by making these small changes, it kind of forces you to make other changes. Mm -hmm. And it's not like it's bad. You know, I'm not, I'm not doing this hard hollywood actor workout stuff where you had three workouts a day and whatever i'm just doing normal stuff and going to the gym yep. um so you know i really anybody that needs to get healthy can do this i mean it's it's hard on paper but it's really not hard in reality nice the that's... physical part's not it's so that's that's the hard part the mental aspect of it what would you, what would you say for, what would you be your piece of mental specific advice? Maybe one to two from your experience that for the next person coming in, what, could, what words of advice do you have? Man, um, set small goals. Even if it's something you like, man, I can do that. I already know I can lose five pounds. So I'm going to set it for, you know, I'm going to set 15 pounds. Don't, man, you can set new goals. And that's something that I've been constantly doing. I mean, 30 pounds was an eight month goal. It wasn't long that I went, uh, uh, 30 pounds is going to be 90 days. So I'm going to do 10 pounds a month. Um, but that wasn't my goal. You know, if I would have said I'm losing 30 pounds in three months, I would have quit. I just would have quit. You can reevaluate and set new goals, set small goals. You know, if you can do a small goal, boom, now you got that confidence that, you know what, I said 15, but I set five, I made five. I'm going to do 15 now. You know, it's, that's the biggest thing. If you commit to this program or any program, as long as you can commit, if you set small goals, it's going to be easier on you mentally to obtain your long-term goal. And if you can do that, maybe your long-term goal will become short-term. And, and that's what happened with me. I said that and it was kind of unrealistic, you know, but I had to put something in my mind. I'm like, man, if, if in eight months or a year from now, if I can break 200, man, I'll be in good shape, you know? And next thing you know, in two months, I'm going, I'm going to hit 30 pounds in three months. And, you know, I've had people say, oh, it's because you quit drinking pop and eating candy. Well, you know what? That's probably a big part. Don't get me wrong. But it ain't 30 pounds. That ain't 30 pounds. That's that's not, you know, and last night we're laying in bed. We're kind of slouched way down. We were both reading something or she's reading or watching something. And I'm I'm watching something and I reach up to scratch my chest. I went, then I poked it. <laughs> like, that's hard. That was, that was just kind of squishy just a couple months ago. <laughs> and I, I go, sweetheart, I got to push on that. <laughs> she pushes on. I go, that's harder than what I thought it'd be. Yeah. She goes, that's what she said. Oh, nice. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, your humor gets back and stuff, but it was 
unexpected. I didn't think that that would be, it's not rock hard, don't get me wrong. I mean, I'm not, you know, bouncing quarters yet, but. um, Oh, I think we were dying there for a second. My screen went black. I still got you. You got Okay. Yep, so I still got you. Um, That's pretty cool. Yeah. Set the small goals because before you know it, your, your big goals already there and achieve. That's true, man. Is there a, is there something, is there anything that you'd want to add on that I haven't asked about? That you can think um, of? Man, I don't know. We talked about a lot, didn't we? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I we I, did. I think, I think I went over your hour. Yeah. I went way over your <laughs> yeah. hour mark. Hey man, we're we're chatting and we're in the zone. It's all good. I like it. It's not a big deal at all. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Um any message for anyone who is on the fence about wanting to not just man, specifically like sign up, but more so make changes. It, yeah, I mean, I don't think there is a thing on the fence. Um, if you're thinking about it, you're you're already crossing. I mean, you've thought about it. You're just not implementing, right? If you're thinking about it, that means you want to do it. Something's holding you back. You're afraid of something. Maybe you're afraid of failing. Maybe you're afraid of not knowing how to get started. And I think for a lot of people, that's it. And, you know, for me, part of the fear was money. I mean, I didn't want to spend money on something that I would quit, you know, I, you know, and even something as little as 50 to 100 bucks. Because if I got doing it and I realized this isn't for me, I would feel bad about spending a hundred bucks on myself for something I didn't use. Um, so I realized that's, that's an issue for people. Um, but you know what? Coach Kyle and there are other people out there that post little snippets on Instagram or whatever platform they use about a simple workout. Well, there's nothing to say that you can't go find 10 different Coach Kyles and steal one of each of them's workout and just go, yep, that one, I don't think I can do that. Good, don't do it. Get the one you think you can do and just do a couple of those, you know, a couple of days a week. And then you're going to go, okay, I can do this workout stuff. You'll feel more comfortable about investing some money in yourself to do that, Um, you know, and that's kind of where we're at with my wife right now too is you know investing money in ourselves is not something we've ever really done and it's hard for us so you know that's kind of I mean where we're at with her I would have not have hooked up with coach Kyle if it wasn't for free and I know that that's a blessing for me um not everyone hardly anyone's going to get that opportunity I mean how many other um you know, fitness coaches, health coaches out there do this. I haven't found another one. I looked. I didn't find another coach out there saying, hey, I'm going to show you what what you can do. And if you don't succeed, you don't, you, it's not get your money back because they'll all say get your money back because they know you're not going to ask for your money back. You're going to have it for two months and you might do it for two months. And the majority of people stop. That's just the facts. That's the that's the data. And the other part of the data is people don't ask for their money back before 30 days. 31 day, they might want their money back, but no one asks for it back in 30 days. You don't even, you didn't even say that for me. You just said, do it for free. You know, do it for free. And so well, I'm doing it for free and I'm learning that, man, I'm going to have to find a way to extend this, you know, and uh, I think what I'll probably do is pay for the wife to, to do it. And then I'll just piggyback off her for a while. <laughs> yeah. She's piggybacking <laughs> off me. Sorry. <laughs> but, you know, no, nah, man, there's a spouse in the house discount. No biggie, no biggie. Um, but uh, you know, that was, that was tough. Um, and people, I get it. I understand it. I, I'm, I'm, I was there. I'm still there. Um, that, you know, it's one of those things that holds people back. But yeah, I know it's cheesy, and I thought it was cheesy every time I hear someone say it. Um, you got to, you got to invest something. If it is fifty dollars now and a couple hundred later, or if it is, 
you know, a hundred dollars a month until, you know, whatever. I, I know people who spend a lot of money to have food mailed to them so that they can get healthy. Well, man, I think that's more expensive than most um, programs out there, you know, whether it's your program or someone else's. Uh, but I wish I'd have been brave enough to do it a long time ago. I mean, I bought stuff that I don't need, you know, if I would have bought and spending, instead of spending a few hundred bucks on flannel shirts that I bought because it got somebody's name on it, you know, whatever. Um, I, and, and now I, I can't wear them. Thanks, by the way. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. I had to buy, I had to buy double X, oh, you know, shit. and I, I like this brand. It's Dixon, Dixon brand flannels. Yeah. I've got several and I had to buy, you know, extra large because I had to hide the gut. And now they're nightgowns, you know, mm. I mean, <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> like there's a part of me that's like, shit, that sucks. And then there's a part of me that's like, shit, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Right. I mean, yeah. <laughs> so what, so it's like, oh, a good problem to have. I'm like, no, they cost like, 50 to 60 bucks a yeah, shirt that's that not a good problem to have. <laughs> I, I would say just christmas is coming up but it's still a while away so mm-hmm. yeah. well, <laughs> i'm gonna make up for it with <clears throat> buying a new motorcycle yeah there you go there you go <laughs> yeah you know what all those really thick like long flannel now they'll just be waving in the wind waving, you basically yeah. have now a it... cat uh cape <laughs> yeah, yeah. <right. laughs> oh man oh, oh man, man. Marty, my man, I don't want to take up too much of your time. I believe, well, we we are on for a solid chunk of time. Uh, yeah. But for the folks that are listening, you definitely dropped a solid chunk of knowledge bombs. You gave a lot of feedback on your story. You gave a lot of context of the program, a lot of the program benefits and everything like that. Um, I guess before we go our separate ways for the time being, is there anything, any last words that you want to share to the folks that are listening? Um, You know, just don't give up on yourself, uh, ask for help. And most importantly, find a method that you get enjoyment out of. Uh, it's going to hurt. It's going to suck. Don't get me wrong. I mean, there's going to be days that I mean, I wake up and it's like, oh, it's, you know, I, a new lift routine. I'm just so mm-hmm. sore. I'm like, okay, but I'm going to walk today. Tomorrow, when I go back for the next weight day it's going to be better it's not i mean you're going to be hurting just as bad two days later sometimes don't let that discourage you right it's temporary pain um you know just but if you find something that you enjoy doing whether you learn to enjoy lifting weights which i have in four weeks Mm -hmm. we've been lifting for four weeks um, I, I enjoy it. The wife enjoys it. We're like, oh, we, you know, we get to go, we get to lift tomorrow. Tomorrow we get to go lift, um, which we'll talk about some of that later. Uh, but uh, if you enjoy it, it's easy to keep doing it. Right. So find a way to get you started that you enjoy. Doesn't matter. You know, if you can enjoy it, do it, get your body moving and ask for help. Little goals, ask for help. And I mean, before you know it, that long-term goal you've been thinking about setting in your lap, you know? And so, um, yeah. That's awesome, man. Well, my friends, my tribe, my peeps, there's a little outro. Uh, If you're listening to this live on Facebook, comment live below. Thank you very much for spending time with us. Uh, If you're checking this out on the replay, just comment replay. That way I just have an idea of when you're uh, checking us out. And if you want similar progress or you want to learn more about basically Marty's journey and how I could possibly help you out with that, then by all means, just reach out to me uh, either on the Facebook. If you're checking this out live, uh, just shoot me a DM or on Instagram at warrior body Kyle. You can just shoot me a DM there. You can just say, Hey, I just checked out your podcast with Marty. It was really interesting. I'm intrigued about listening or learning more about your program and what you got to deliver. And I am more than happy to uh, help you out. And worst case scenario, I will point you in the direction of someone I trust that believe can help you. So no matter what, at the end of the day, progress is the main priority, Uh, better health, better wealth, 
better joy, better relationships, more happiness, living a fulfilling life. That's what my philosophy, my fit philosophy is. And I think, uh, I think everyone, everyone has a little bit of extra health in them. I think it's good. And the only times that we find ourselves really wanting health is when it's, when it's really in a, a really shitty spot and we definitely want to get it before that point. So if you're checking this out, thank you very much for spending time with us. I appreciate it a ton. Um, and that's pretty much it. This is my very first live guest podcast interview nice. kind of like a nice little combination of things going on so it's pretty cool so i was really really happy about that and marty thank you very much for hey, being for a stellar me. dude man like you're unreal you're driven you're passionate you're hardworking. you get out of your own way it's awesome hey we'll talk to you later absolutely peace